you know, Ethiopia to export, uh, you know, uh, it, most of its products duty free to the United States. I think it's going to depend with what they th think they are go going to get uh, in return out of Addis. And I suspect uh, they may use that, uh, they're not going to telegraph it ahead of time as an incentive or as a condition uh, in what they're discussing that uh, there is need for accountability, you know, there is need to be able to uh, follow through with some of those are, the agreements that have been made. And they may be using that as the carrot mm -hmm. uh, to try and uh, extract some either concessions or uh, push the government in Addis, you know, to to take certain steps, especially in so far as uh, holding people to account. You know, massive atrocities uh, were committed and by both sides, as has been pointed out by the State Department. Um, but uh, Washington is also limited. It's limited in the sense that uh, at the height of the conflict, it successfully uh, was able to achieve paranization of Addis. And, uh, you know, using, of course, the kind of soft power it has around the world, uh, whether in terms of media uh, or as well as within Europe, uh, you know, it uh, succeeded in actually isolating Addis. Now, uh, in reaction, uh, Addis demonstrated that they have partners mm. and they have alternatives. Mm. Yeah, and those alternatives were exercised and was evidenced by very robust involvement and very public, uh, you know, presence of China. Yeah, in Ethiopia that mm. said we costing a lot with uh, Prime Minister Abiy uh, Ahmed mm. and we're not going away as well as others who you you know thought that's an opportunity to be able to make up for what uh, Washington Excellent and point. the West you know, mm. was yeah. not making up. Yeah. And so that has also constrained the hand of Washington in trying to do what they please or as they choose. Now uh, with the outbreak of the conflict in Ukraine you can see there is an increasing interest, not just by Washington, but countries in the West, to actually get a lot of African countries on board, on their side. Uh, Ethiopia, as a strategically important country, and the second most populous country on the continent, is very important to that dynamic. Uh, to isolate it uh, may mean, you know, having fewer allies, you know, with you mm -hmm. in the larger geopolitical context, and especially as the Horn of Africa becomes the next theater of global geopolitics, uh, especially in the Southern Hemisphere. And so, uh, we see this a continuation of U.S. trying to support a peace process, but also trying to expand its foothold and restore the kind of uh, influence, you know, they had in Addis Ababa, as well as within the Horn of Africa region, uh, at a time, of course, when the region is also facing a lot of challenges. You know, Abiy Ahmed and Ethiopia needs a lot of help, uh, much like, of course, the rest of the Horn of Africa region that is facing serious issues of food security. Uh, and stabilization. And they realized that also Abiy Ahmed and Addis is, going, is critical in terms of uh, anchoring a, 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 some kind of stability within the, 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 the entire hemisphere. But I think fundamentally it is a continuation of the kind of diplomatic engagements we've seen from Addis. And it's not just from Addis, it's also coming from the East. You know, the Russians are trying to do the same, you know, the Chinese are trying to do the same in their own way. And, and so you have a contest both, one, the desire to restore what you lost, uh, two, to try and be able to spread certain values and remain consistent to that, and three, respond to the geopolitical challenges and realities that right now the West and the United States also facing uh, from its uh, 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 you know, arc rivals in the East. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I want to put it that uh, 